Hey guys and welcome to part 2 of this code along series of making a mail this to clone. On this second part we are going to be looking at the post method, the email validation and adding support for JDBC and MySQL. And now let's start inside the forward post controller. Let's create a method that is going to be the one method, well, the action method that's going to be used to handle the post requests that are supposed to send the email. So we return a result as per usual. Yes, and process mail request. So it's going to take in a string email address. This. And for the time being, we are just going to be returning OK, like this. Now we use the routes file, post, this, controllers, forward, not showing because it's not compiled, we haven't refreshed, so that's it and email address which is a string like this and i'm going to say like this so basically what we are doing is saying that every post on slash and then it takes a, a string basically which we are, we are naming email address everything that goes on that fits this template over here it, get, it gets executed by this method this action method over here and actually let's make some logging log passing email request and we are gonna show the email address that we got the request to. Okay, so we do this. We basically refresh so that it uh, compiles everything again. And now to do a post, I'm going to use Insomnia. I don't know if you've used this software, but it's really good. I'm going to create a new request. I'm going to say post email request. It's going to be a post request. And nobody for the time being. Let's create it like this. Okay. I'm going to say HTTP this not s i'm testing it closed 999 nine, 9000 and my email address test example.com like so and let's give it a run and we receive that which is good This basically means that this method is working as designed till now. Okay, so now let's give it a look at our diagram. When we do a normal post submission, what happened, what should happen is basically we should validate if there if it is a valid email address. If uh, this post that we are doing using Insomnia, uh, if the string that we are passing it's not a valid email address, we should redirect the user to an error page. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Then, because you understand this service could be abused, yeah, if we don't make any security features into it, anybody could basically create a form post, a form with uh, the email address for somebody else and then just uh, go and hammer on the on the submit button and fill that person's email full of spam yeah and we don't want that so what we want to do is basically only send emails to email addresses that are on our database so this implies that we need to have a database okay and we'll look at the, the rest of the, the thing in a second so let's first take care of the valid email address. So to do that, let's see. Var validate email address. I know that there is a 
commons, Apache commons thing that allows me to do this. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is the one. Perfect. So commons valid data. And Maven, let's see what's the last one. 1.6 sounds good. Let's go for it. And we want SBT. So copy. And we are going for our build SBT and just add this in. Okay. The emails like this. Okay. Let me just check. I'm pretty sure that I need to stop the process and start it again. Yep. So let's do that now. And let's refresh over here as well. So that it shows up. Well, it gets re-indexed on my ID so I can use it properly. One eternity later. Okay. So it's done. And now inside here. Called. No valid data. Perfect. Comments is valid. Email address. If it's not valid, we basically say we give out. Invalid email address. I'm gonna say it's going to be a warning, and we return for the time being an internal server error. No, we return. What a, a bad request! Yeah, like so. So let's see what happens. Filing, all is good. Now let's say we send it to dot one, two, three. This is invalid. So bad request, invalid email address. So this is good. That first step is done. Let's look at the diagram again. So the next step is email address on DB. So let's take care of adding DB right now. Let's close this. As you can see, I'm always inside the documentation page. Okay. And what I'm doing, I've basically done this before. This is not the first time I add JDBC support or use a database with a play framework. So I know more or less what should be happening, but I'm showing you how I figure things out. Support, let's add this. And the point. We could add two different ones, but I'm just going to go with this and plus plus this one. And I don't want this version. I want version eight because that's what I'm using. So wait. Is this the latest one? Let's go and check. Whatever. Actually, so the latest one, it's not, it's even okay. 
do that with two. 8020. Nice. So just leave it like that. What's this? That's the validator. Let's close. And yeah, let's add some configurations for our database. Uh, we are going to be using a MySQL database. So let's just copy these ones inside our application configuration. We are going to be calling this forward me this. I'm going to create a user called forward me this user. And the password I'm going to give him is test one, two, three. Let me restart this process and see what happens. One eternity later. Okay, there's an error over there. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, just leave it like that. Let's restart. So the plus plus, because I'm not using a sequence, it started giving me an error. I should have paid more attention. Let's leave it like this for the time being. One eternity later. And let's refresh this. Good. Okay. So my SQL driver was not found. Let's see which one it is. So my SQL JDBC driver eight driver. Okay. Let's try it this way. Save and restart. Open rerun. Give it a look. Okay. Let's connect to our database. Yeah. Let's create the schema. Forward me this, like we said before. Apply, apply, close. So we've got the schema done. Now let's create the user. Add account, forward me this user, password is test123, test123, my privileges, let's add this one, select all, apply. Okay, let's see if it got created correctly. Let's create a me this or me this user. Okay, and test one, two, three. And we have access to it. Perfect. So let's see. Stop and rerun. One eternity later. And it works. Okay. So there's two other things that I want to do with, with databases on this software. The first thing is we want to use eBeans to do the handling of the database. It's just really convenient. The support inside Play is really good, so we want to use that. 
And we also want to use evolutions, which basically means I can basically compose the entity beans inside IntelliJ. And when we change the entity beans, basically if we create other attributes or anything like, or relationships and stuff like that, we hit refresh and basically evolutions looks at those changes and says, okay, does this match my schema, database schema? If it doesn't, it generates a script that allows me to update the schema to match my entities. So it allows me to draw the model, the database model using my entities. This is not usually the best way to do, but it's a, for our small project, it's one way to do it and we are going to be using it. We'll stop here and on the next part, we are looking at eBeans and entities. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified of the next part.